Hello everyone, Matrix here from the Grim Reapers, and welcome back. You may recall a short while ago, I carried out a review of Winwing's autopilot control panel for the Boeing 737NG and the 737 MAX. Winwing have now released the EFIS control panels for the 737NG and the 737 MAX, and they're shown in this picture. Together they combine with the autopilot panel to make a nice single unit for 737 fans. They're available through Winwing's websites around the world, and this will be a review of the EFIS control panels themselves. Now let's have a look at some of the differences between the two panels. On the left in this picture you've got the 737NG version, or on the right you've got the 737 MAX version. First and most obvious difference is that there's a VSD button in the centre of the 737 MAX version, and this will bring up the vertical situation display. Another noticeable difference between the two is the range selector knobs. On the 737NG version, you have a rotary knob with 210 degrees of movement and eight fixed range detents. On the 737 MAX version, there are no detents. It's a free rotating knob through 360 degrees and left to decrease range and right to increase it. Moving on to mounting options. In this picture here, you can see the 737 NG and MAX autopilot panel in the center, which I've already reviewed. And on the left, the 737NG version of the EFIS control panel. On the right, you've got the 737 MAX version. Winwing provide all the necessary fittings to bolt all three of these units together, and together they make a very convenient single unit for you to mount. You can also mount these three panels as a single unit. One way of mounting the unit is to use the supplied mounting brackets and the double-sided adhesive dots to mount it on a flat desktop. There are other mounting options available, if you use the Winwing clamp-on desk mounts, you can raise them and mount this on the two of them. The instructions for doing so are in the manual, and I don't propose to replicate them here. You can also mount this in home cockpit simulator if you wish, but home cockpit simulators vary tremendously, and I don't propose to cover the mounting options for home cockpit simulators in this review. Another nice feature provided by Winwing is the reversible glare shield panels, so you can fit the EVIS control panel on either side and specialise in the 737NG or the 737 MAX as required. The last item I'll include in this review is the magnetic latching switch for the 737NG and maxed autothrottle. The normal panel includes a switch that does not magnetically latch, but this is an upgrade which will allow you to latch the switch in the up position or the arm position. It will then unlatch as required by the simulator you happen to be flying at the time. Now let's have a look at unboxing. The panel arrives in the usual Winwing sturdy packaging, and this one happens to be the 737NG version. Opening it up, we'll find the usual Winwing sturdy packaging inside. Slide that out, quite a snug fit, and we immediately see there's a USB-C cable. Nice right angle connector on the end to connect neat and tidily with the panel. In here we have a Winwing's usual quality control certificate, always reassuring. And here we have some of Winwing's usual double-sided adhesive dots. On the other side, we can fish out a bag of tools, all the tools necessary to fit the panel, it's always nice to have. And a bag of fittings, note the rectangular black plastic fittings there to bind the panels together with the autopilot panel in the middle. Lifting off the packaging, we can see the panel itself and the alternative glare shield underneath. Currently the captain's glare shield panel is fitted and that all looks very nice. On the back, USB-C port as mentioned, and a cable anchor as well, which is very nice. Four threaded fittings for mounting, and two small self-tappers to secure the glare shield in place. The buttons all feel pretty good, a little bit stiff because they're very new, and the push buttons all feel very nice. Yeah, so all very nice, all things considered. The alternative glare shield panel should be fairly straightforward to fit. The loose one is for the first officer's panel. Okay, one more item to go. That's the uh, pair of mounting brackets underside on the underside of the packaging, just to complete the whole thing. You'd normally want to mount the EFIS control panels either side of the autopilot panel and mount the whole thing as a single unit rather than trying to use the mounting brackets for this particular panel on its own. So, there we have it, a very nice package. 
Now let's have a look at the panels in use. I've set up Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 here with PMDG 737-900. Down to the bottom right, you can see that I've set up a camera showing the EFIS control panel as an inset in the main video. OK, what I'll do now is demonstrate the use of plan mode when setting up a flight plan in the flight management computer. OK, you can see here I've set up Ibiza as the departure point and I'm going to enter the runway. OK, I've set up runway 24 as a departure runway at Ibiza and you can see the extended centerline has been added. I'm now going to enter the departure for runway 24 at Ibiza via Cabaret and you can see that the flight plan has come up as dashed blue indicating that it's only entered and not activated. So I'm now entering the arrival in Menorca and I've selected the ILS Zulu for runway 19 and its related Cabaret arrival. Again you can see I've moved the legs up so I can review the approach into Menorca. All you need to do now on the flight plan is to stitch the final approach fix to Donav and that will complete the flight plan, removing any discontinuities. Once I activate the flight plan, you'll see the flight plan route changes from dashed cyan to solid magenta, indicating the flight plan has gone from planning to active. So if we were to use LNAV for navigation, this is the flight plan route that the aircraft would fly. Now that I've finished with plan mode, I'm going to switch to map mode and you can see the route is still solid magenta and that's orientated track up so I can see the relative route that the aircraft is going to take. You can also select VOR mode if you're flying a VOR course, but I haven't got anything set up at the moment. Similarly, approach mode, and again, nothing is set up yet and it's not the appropriate flight phase. Quickly back to plan mode, but we'll leave it in map mode as and when the time comes. You can see here the range rings on the 737NG, they're actually specific ranges marked, and you can change the scale either in plan or map mode, and you can see the changes as appropriate. We'll leave it in 20 miles as that gives us a good picture of the departure. Now let's set the altimeter setting. In the States, of course, they use inches of mercury and that's come up on the lower right corner of the primary flight display. In Europe, you use hectopascals and again, you can see that change. Another feature of this control is you can use the center button marked standard to set the standard altimeter setting. Again, you can see that change in the bottom right corner. Push it again and it reverts to the QNH altimeter setting. To the left, we can see the altimeter minima setting, choice of radio or barrel on the outer knob. What we'll do is we'll set that for the ILS minima for Ibiza in case we have to do an emergency return. Around about 230 feet would be a suitable minima setting. And you can see there's an accelerator function if you rotate and hold the knob. I find this rather too rapid and you need to use the blip facilities I'm using here rather too much in order to set the minima accurately. So there we have it, 230 feet is set. Again, you can push the reset button to zero it. A quick blip on the outer knob restores the minima. Okay, other features of the panel. You've got switches to display VOR2 and ADF2 information. ADF2 in the simulator is deactivated. And similarly for VOR1 and ADF1. You can see the information come up on the lower corners of the NAV display. I'll leave both VOR selected, even though they don't display any useful information. At the top of the panel, you've got a flight path vector button, and you can see that comes up on the PFD behind the attitude indication. Of course, in Russia, they use meters for altitude. Push this button, and you can see the altitude display of meters appear at the top right of the PFD. Down at the bottom, we have a number of buttons to display various bits of information on the nav display. Push terrain, the range rings come up, and the terrain to the north of the airfield at Ibiza. Press the position knob, and your present position information comes up. Data gives you data for each waypoint. If we look at airports, there's nothing nearby, so we need to increase the range rings, but you also see the terrain for the Spanish mainland come up as well. So, similarly with waypoints, if we reduce the range to 40 miles, you can see the waypoints appear. Press the weather button, should bring up the weather radar. We haven't turned the radar on and there's no weather in any case, so nothing shows at present. The station button brings up nav aids, and as you can see, there's a TACAN beacon at Ibiza Airport itself. OK, as a last item in this review, let's have a look at the use of the magnetically latching autothrottle switch for the 737NG and MAX. Here you can see that I've changed the camera view 
to show the auto throttle arm switch on the autopilot panel. To arm the auto throttle, raise the switch and the auto throttle arm light comes on. To disengage, push the simulator's auto throttle disengage button and the switch will disengage with a loud clack. This is very like the switch in the real aircraft. Whilst the switch is magnetically latched, the auto throttle will be active. So for good measure, let's just try that again. In summary then, Windwing's two EFIS control panels for the 737NG and the 737 MAX are nice high quality pieces of equipment at a very good price, so extraordinarily good value. One thing I would say is that the panels when new, the switches are a little bit stiff to operate, but as you use them, I'm sure they will free up somewhat. All in all, very useful items for those who fly 737NG and MAX in simulators, and particularly for those who want the extra immersion, or if you're running a home cockpit simulator setup. I hope you've enjoyed this review, and I look forward to seeing you again in the near future. Thank you.